it's Hattie. We're at the RAD on Water Sports Show. I'm here with Mark Rushall, and we're going to talk a little bit about start line strategy and kind of upwind strategy. So, first of all, do you have any kind of tips and tricks for the start line strategy? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think um, the most important thing is actually to link the two. Uh, it's very easy to get hung up on uh, line bias, on individual boats, uh, on all sorts of stuff specifically about the start. And uh, of course that's all very well, but if you can, make, you can make, for example, the perfect pin end start on starboard, and if the reason that the, the, reason that the line is biased is that the wind's in a left phase, you need to be on port tack. And the, the, the whole of the rest of the fleet are forcing you to stay on starboard tack. So I think always, uh, when you're thinking about your starting strategy, take one step back. Where am I actually trying to get to? What tack am I trying to be on? And it may be that the apparently uh, race winning starting strategy is different to the start winning starting strategy. Within the starting strategy, there's obviously quite a lot of planning and pre-start stuff. So can you talk us through like a, a little bit about the pre-start work? Yeah, uh, I mean pre-start, <laughs> when does pre-start start? I mean, um, the uh, Olympics is in, uh, it's, it's in three years and uh, the pre-start has started for that two years ago. Uh, but for most of us, we've probably only got 10 minutes. So for me, um, I'm always trying to, I'm trying to keep things simple. So what I'm trying to do is, where should my focus be on this, for, for this beat? Should I be looking at the shifts? Is there a, a particular reason for being somewhere on the race course? For instance, is there more pressure on one side or the other, more wind speed on one side or the other? Is, is this a tidal venue, so is that important? So for me, every minute of my pre-start is about trying to work out what, where should my focus be? For the, for the next 10 minutes. And, 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 and once I've decided that, it's then all quite easy. Because if I know we're focusing on the shifts, if everybody else is going the other way and I'm on the lifted tack, I'm, 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 I'm calm, I'm, I'm, I'm cool about that because I know I've spent that time beforehand establishing and, and giving myself confidence that that is the most important thing. So for example, if I was trying to work out if shifts are important, all I'd do is sail upwind for 10 minutes, well, five minutes probably, looking at my compass, getting a feel for how big are the shifts, how regular are they, how often are they, just giving me a feel for, for, for what's going on. If I can see it looks like there's somewhere where there's more pressure, more wind speed, uh, I would, number one, try and think, what's causing that? In other words, is it likely to be still there when I get there? And if there's a good reason for it to be there, I'll go and sail in it and say, does it feel like there really is more pressure or not? So with the pre-start stuff, I feel like, well, from my experience anyway, it's all about just getting on the water early because I know in the youth and kind of junior programs, you can leave it quite late and then you run out of time to do things. So just getting on the water early is a really good tip from me, I think. Um, so talked a little bit about kind of the start line strategy. So as you said, kind of link it into the upwind strategy in that first hack. Can you talk us through a little bit about that? That all comes back to the first thing. If I've decided that my focus should be on the shifts and the wind is in a left phase at the start, I've got to get that tack in early, whatever it takes. If it means ducking boats, if it means sailing really hard, high to force the boats to windward me, of me off, I've just got to get that tack in early. And to be honest, if I have miscalculated the start and, I, uh, and, and I've put myself in a position where I can't do that, I just need to work at, find a way of bailing out and getting out. If I am just uh, trying to sail to a bit more pressure on the left-hand side or a bit less tide on the left-hand side, then my focus then is just on keeping the boat trundling as fast as I can. I don't want to get lee bowed, I don't want to get forced out. I'm not really bothered about when, I, when I'm, when I'm going to tack next. All I'm interested in is defending my lane and keeping my boat trucking. So my, my focus becomes a lot more internal, uh, looking at the telltales, keeping the boat flat, main sheet, tiller, all that stuff. So while we're talking about strategy, if you really want to delve deeper into uh, the, the things that uh, might affect your strategy and uh, how you might prioritize the right things, I have written quite a lot about it in RYA Tactics. Uh, I completely rewrote the book last year and there is, uh, yeah, hopefully some that, something there for everybody who's interested in learning more about it. 
So big thanks to Mark for being with us today. If you want any more information or top tips and tricks, then you can go onto our Dinghy Racing channel on Instagram and across the social media channels.